Welcome to episode 318 of the Game Deflators podcast. My name is John, and I'm joined by Ryan. Hey, everybody here at the Game Deflators podcast. This week, we're looking at three of the highest rated shooters in this week's Triple Threat Throwdown. Uh, this week, we are talking about three games that share a high score. Uh, we are looking at Perfect Dark, Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary, and Gears of War. Yep, three classics for sure. I think they're all like a 90 plus on Metacritic. Some of them are considered greatest games of all time in their respective genre. So definitely excited to dive into that a little later. But uh, first, you can find us on the GameDeflators.com. You can also find us on our social media handles at Game Deflators on Blue Sky. I think it's Blue Sky. It's at Game Deflators. Uh, and on X, you can also find us at The Game Deflators on Instagram, Facebook, and Threads. You're also watching us most likely, so go ahead and hit the little bell on YouTube and subscribe and comment. All of that good stuff that comes along with it. And if you're listening to us, we'll go ahead and like, subscribe on that podcast application. Leave us a comment and a five-star review. Multiple five-star reviews if you can do it. And if you're watching us on YouTube? Just for All the right, YouTubes. dude. Just for <laughs> YouTubes, yeah. <laughs> and then we point to ears just in case, uh, you know, for... Uh, telepathically uh they can go ahead and, and figure we're touching ears so let's go ahead and talk about recent pickups uh i don't have it physically in hand it's sitting in my mailbox right now i haven't grabbed it but i picked up 10 hearts on the ps5 i've it's heard like of a, that one yeah it it was like ten dollars so it's normally like 25 30 from what i've been seeing online so i think it was 10 bucks for i want to say it was target they had one in stock on target so I added the cart, purchased it, good to go, right? And I shipped it with something uh, that was... Oh, I have not much... heard of this. This is like a Christmas game. So just the season, right? Maybe we play it for Christmas time. I don't know. We'll I mean, see. we already picked our games right before we started recording. So you, you might have mentioned that. We we could... I forgot. We could, uh, <laughs> we could totally... We'll edit out that last one. Yeah, maybe the last one. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Because yeah, you haven't totally even bought that. that one, right? I have all of these. Oh, I thought you were saying that last one was cheap, so you would buy it. <laughs> uh, no, no. The last one I was considering would have been uh, Wario World. Um, okay, so let's see. We got one, two. Technically, we've only got three games we'll be playing this month. So uh, it doesn't matter. It, we'll just say the next five games we plan on playing, and this will be one of them. Okay. Don't that worry. Well, I'm in for it. Let me just say it now. Here's our plans for future episodes. We're looking at playing Wario Land 3 on the uh, Game Boy. We're going to play some Uninvited on the NES. We're going to play Psychosis on the TurboGrafx-16, Sim Theme Park on the PS1, and then Tin Hearts on PS5. Not in that order. It'll happen at some point in time in that order. In Perfect. That order. Yeah, there we go. Okay. It, it's late, dude. This is, this is one of our late night recordings that we're doing in advance. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's back there, to the old was. days. We always used to record at night. Yeah, at night and always like on a Thursday or something. And with drinks. And with drinks. Yeah, and in person. So well, different lots times. has changed. We could if still you've drink, been with the game deflators since the beginning. How? How did you find our, us? Our, and how our, have you stuck along around this long? And I don't know who you are. Our well, first probably episode. I'm not online. That's John. Our, John's responding our, to all the social media. Yeah, I'm pretty sure our first episode, we shared a microphone. Yeah, did I bring the... Uh, oh, you can't see it in the shot. I've got a microphone somewhere up here. Like, I think we had one microphone and we both were talking at the same time. Yeah, that's yeah. how far we've come. Uh, so if you've been with us that long, appreciate it. Uh, but that is what we're going to be playing uh, over the next few weeks. And then 10 Hearts was my pickup, as I said. In terms of what I am playing right now, Super Mario RPG, still hanging in on that. Um, haven't gotten much further uh, since we last talked. Uh, we're recording on a Tuesday night. We last talked on Sunday, so haven't done much then. Uh, but I did start more Plague Tale Requiem, so I, I'm kind of pissed off. I wasted so much time with a bug in the game. So oh. when you get the chap, yeah. So when you get the chapter two, I progress through the level, and then I'm getting to my destination, and a horse and carriage appears out of nowhere and blocks my way. I'm like, what? So I'm like, spontaneous okay. horse. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe the horse is meant to be there. I'm supposed to go a different direction. So I'm like looking all around the level. Don't see anything happening. 
I'm like, okay, I'll restart. Well, then I restart and the horse appear. Like I start at the horse. I'm like, oh, okay, that's odd. All right, let me Google this. And somebody says, oh, it's not a bug. You have to find a different way to go. I'm like, that's kind of odd, but okay. And so I tried looking around again, didn't see anything. So I've wasted at this point, like 15 minutes of my time and I'm falling asleep in the process of it. So I decide, okay, I'm just going to go back to the main menu, restart the chapter, delete my progress in that level. I go ahead and do that. And then I go to like the first person I see, have a conversation, which never came up the first go around. It would not allow me to talk to this individual the first time or any other time that I went to him with that horse bug. And so then I progressed through the level again and went to where the horses were and the horses were gone. It was the weirdest bug, dude. Like, just like honestly game breaking. Like if I could not get past them and have to restart the game from the beginning, I might have just said screw it and not played it at that point out of pure frustration. Um, but yeah, so I finally progressed through. But by that time, I was so like half asleep that I progressed all the way to the cutscene and have no idea what the hell happened. So if you end up watching that playthrough, uh, enjoy me going around figuring out like what the hell's going on and then enjoy my character standing there waiting for me to wake up so I can continue going forward. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I might That's honestly. Like... Yeah, go on. Oh, I was going to say, like, every time I'm like playing Bug Fables, since like it's so much more pressure to be like recording the game, even though I'm not like voicing anything or doing anything. But it's like every time I screw up an attack prompt or like have to get up and go to the bathroom, I'm like, oh, but I'm like recording like this is exactly when people are going to like nope out because they have no idea what's going on or they know I suck. Yeah, I I may honestly just delete that video and restart it, uh, but, you know, we'll see. So it's not like I progress very far at that point. So like I could theoretically restart it. Maybe that is what I do and uh, and just kind of go from there. So there we'll see. Maybe I'll do it tonight. And then there's going to be a period of time where I'm not able to play because I'm just busy at next week. So, uh, but how about yourself? Any pickups since we last chatted? Nope. No pickups. Nope. It's almost Christmas, John. You buy gifts for other people, not yourself. What kind of person? Oh, are no. You? I bought for myself and my son and my wife. That's it. <laughs> and then um, I've been playing Pokemon Pocket TCG and I made a mistake. What's that? I didn't cancel my second accounts premium <laughs> early <laughs> enough. So I subscribed for one extra month on my second account, which is kind of unfortunate because that's the one I was probably going to like burn after they introduced trading so that I could trade over everything. Yeah. But I, I'm actually so I had like a weak head start. I have one more card. I'm at like 207 out of 226 on my second account. I'm like 206 out of 226 on my main account. So I have one more card. I have not done like a lot on the other account. So like I never do battling or anything on my second account. I do all that on my main account. So I've like, I've gotten you know, a bunch of extra XP from doing that. Like I spent the first couple of weeks not battling at all because yeah. I didn't realize you get like 15 experience per battle. Mm -hmm. So I've been, I, I don't like max out. I don't even know how many battles it takes to max out. I'm assuming it's like I think five. It's five. Yeah, I think okay. it's five. Yeah, That's before kind of you stop getting the tickets. Yeah. So like, I'm not even like doing all the battles every day or anything um, on my main account, but I am two levels higher. So the battling probably accounts for some of that, but I just, you know, so far, like the extra premium stuff that has been introduced. So, you know, that's all live. I think you can see it even if you don't have the premium pass so that they can kind yeah, of the, entice you into it, but it's Mewtwo. just, yeah. So I got that new Mewtwo and I thought that Mewtwo was like, I'm pretty sure you get that Mewtwo promo if you do like i think it's if you collect all five like if you collect five regular mewtwo's hmm. instead of ex ones i think you're supposed to get that promo and then i think they just kind of gave that promo away as like a thing for this i might be wrong but i've definitely seen that card before this launched it might have been in like a data mine online or something but i'm almost positive i've seen somebody else play that mewtwo promo against me 
mm -hmm. prior to its being released in the premium pass. So I think you can still get it in game without I being was, premium. I was thinking the other day, it would actually save you money, I would think, if you purchase your premium pass like the 15th of the month because it lasts 30 days and then cancel in the month following, right? And then just kind of renew the next one. So like, for example, December 15th, that would allow you to get all promos in December and all promos in the January time period, you would cancel. And then you don't actually need to go back in until like the 15th of February. So you'd literally, you'd pay $10 for both December and January, and then you'd pay $10 in February, March. So like they launched this game late November. Yeah. And then the Mewtwo stuff just went live like a few days ago or the end of last week or something. So everybody who activated their premium membership thing, like immediately, like I did, I mean, basically we got just kind of that initial Mewtwo kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And now it, I think it's kind of funny that it's like, they gave you the Pikachu, but it was all yeah. Mewtwo play mats and card sleeves and stuff. And mm -hmm. now it's like, the Mewtwo card, but it's all Pikachu play mats and sleeves. Yeah, it's and so stuff. weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a little backwards. Maybe Charizard's next. Um, Probably. So it's like you kind of missed out on that. And if you had done it at like the right time, you probably could have made your premium pass stretch over so that you got like all of the missions and stuff for the original and then all the missions for this. And maybe you could complete them all. Although it is a little difficult. Like well, some of the challenges that are for like hourglass rewards are like get 50, uh, one diamond card pulls. Yeah. And it's like, I mean, it's going to take a little bit to get all of that unless you're buying extra packs or unless you've like cumulatively saved up a bunch of hourglasses that you that's what i do yeah like i i just got like 10 packs the other day and i'm on and i think 30 hourglasses and i can buy another six technically yeah i like that they so, renewed like the shop tickets that you can buy like extra hourglasses and stuff with yeah so i've been definitely spending my saved uh shop tickets for those now I will uh, say I with, the, mis with the missions, you complete the missions for premium throughout the time period, even if you're not tied to it. So for example, I looked today and I had already completed like six of the missions. Technically, you just can't uh, for claim the them. Month. You just can't claim them. So that's what I'm saying. Like if you, if you go like towards the beginning or middle of the month, do your 10 bucks, it stretches until the middle of the next month. You get the premium stuff on that month. You get the premium stuff on the next month. Yeah. But it. I mean, at the end of the day, if you want to do that every month, I mean, you're just, you're just paying for the subscription every month. Like it really makes yeah. no difference to them. Like you're paying $10 every month and you're getting two months benefit, well, but you're doing yeah. it every month. So no, you're doing it every you're still other basically month. subscribed. No, you're only paying every other month because you're canceling. Well, if they do something at the beginning of the month and then they but do they, something, at, they don't, it's whatever. It hasn't premium. even been a full month that the game has been out. Didn't it open up like first week in November? I I don't. Think yeah, so. it was Let like first see. week in November, like last week of October. It's been it's been about a month. So not, nothing from a premium standpoint, nothing changed over that period of time. You had all of your stuff that you could get in the month. OK, no, yeah, you're right. It launched yeah. October 30th. There was no so, new content or anything like that that was created throughout the month. Uh, so that's OK, what I'm saying. so like if they only had the premium going all of November, and now this is the premium for December. Mm -hmm. If you hit it that like last week of November, you could get both months for one, right? Mm -hmm. So then you complete everything for December. And then you wait until near the end of January. And then you pay and you try to get January and February. So you are well, kind of paying every other month. If you do, so I'll just really quick before we move on to the next subject. If you do middle December, you're going to get all the December promos, all the December missions, right? Everything you can get there. Cancel before towards the end, towards the middle of January, because in January, it's going to restart and you're going to get all your January promos and you're early on, like you're, you'll have two weeks essentially to try and clear out everything that's tied to the January missions as much as you can get. Then you wait until February 
And then mid-February, you do it again. So you're skipping. You're Instead of paying $10 every month, you're paying $10 every other month, but you're reaping the benefits of all of those promo cards that'll take place during a period of time. Now, that's based on the current scenario that they have in place or current structure. If they decide down the road, oh, well, it's two weeks of promo, two weeks of promo, then yeah, this is out the water. There's no nothing you can do about that. Okay, well, that's smart. I mean, that could definitely be uh something you could take advantage of if you think that it'll work moving forward i'm trying to not like dump a bunch of money into pokemon I don't GCD, plan on so it. I'm, I'm probably yeah. not gonna re-up at any point but it will be interesting to see what develops over time i mean i'm still having a ton of fun just like rocking the greninja wheezing deck so uh, i'll just keep yeah. playing that until something new comes out that's fun and i've slowed down i've just been picking up like doing my main missions for today, picking up some packs, a few battles. I have a whole bunch of the different like card binder things situated. So like every morning I wake up and I get like five tickets every morning and that's it. So like, I don't really have to do anything. It's all kind of self-sufficient for me. I do a couple wonder picks. I auto set on the Venusaur thing to try and get the promos and whatever items come from that. And that's it. That's all I've you been know, doing as a plate. It would be a lot of fun uh if they and i saw a, a post on this somewhere online today it would be fun if they actually made the daily challenges like interesting like instead of just like log in open a water pack you know open a pack open two packs do a battle like it'd be cool if it was like use this card or make a pokemon fall asleep or poison a pokemon like if they actually made you like mess with your stuff like maybe they're just trying to let everybody play long enough to kind of make sure that they built up a repertoire yeah. of things so that they don't feel like they're missing out or maybe if they introduced like weekly challenges that gave you more time to kind of try to be able to adapt to stuff or you know wonder pick something that could help you to fulfill a challenge or you know something like that it, it could be yeah. interesting we'll see how it goes moving forward yeah by the way mathematically um, in this game on a month to month basis, you should theoretically be able to open up, uh, if you don't have a premium pass, it's around 40, no 60 packs a month, roughly is what you should be able to do in this. So if you start so to... two packs a day, plus, plus you every get four... three days, you get four hourglasses well, well you get it so that's an extra pack every three days no oh. well yes technically well here's yeah exactly yeah. so like you get four hours per day we'll multiply that by 30 it's 120 so theoretically 120 gets you 10 packs and then whatever you can get from like leveling up depending yeah. on whatever level you're at because you mm -hmm. get 12 hourglasses for that Yep. And then certain challenges, like, I mean, obviously, if you're in the premium, you're getting hourglasses. I mean, you do get some hourglasses for like the Venusaur awards and stuff for the solo mm -hmm. challenges. So yep. there's there's definitely room in there. I mean, I'm there's room like to play said, for free. I'm for free 206 to 207 out of 226 base. And then there's mm -hmm. like, I think, 30 or 40 um, like rare off you know full art cards and yeah. those don't even count because they're just like dupes of like all the regular stuff but it's like it's still surprising i i haven't gotten the mew on either account yet and i'm so close like i think on my main i need like magneton genghis khan and like goldeen or something stupid and i've got like every other of the hunt original 150 yeah i think my next like pack buys like my next like 10 packs in a row i'm gonna put all of that towards just getting stuff that i don't have rare wise so and just knock them out one thing that i guess you can't do with like the 10 packs at a time is so i found out i i wish there was better ways to sort certain lists and stuff but if you go in to your collection and you hit the magnifying glass to search yeah it'll tell you, you scroll all the way down to the bottom you can pick like which type of pack so you can pick like the charizard the mewtwo or the pikachu pack and it'll show you like all the cards mm -hmm. for that pack that you can pull and what you're missing so that you can try to put together like out of the original 150 like what you're missing and what packs you need to pull them from if you're trying to get mew 
Yeah. Well, should so, we uh, should we move on? Yeah. So moving on from Pokemon TCG Pocket, Bug Fables. Been playing Bug Fables. Uh, I beat the Hive, uh, so I'm done with that. The one thing that I'm kind of at an odds with at this point in my playthrough is, no pun intended, should I beeline through the story or should I indulge in a little bit more of side questing? I think, uh, I think two stories sessions ago when I started <laughs> playing, I did like a couple of side missions. So I might do them kind of like sparingly here and there. But like this game does present some points where it's like, hey, this main character has like this side mission that you can work on when you have time so it seems like there's kind of like some like character driven side missions that it's like i don't know if i try to extend the story if i'm going to hit like a dead end where i need to go back and kind of clear those out or if i'm going to miss out on something by not doing those so I think I might at least do those kind of like main character story missions. So like at this point, I need to try to find Leafs, uh, like old comrades or their family members that are still alive to try to kind of reconnect him from his time to this time. And then the other one is uh, trying to seek out uh, V's uh, sister to try to mend the relationship, which is kind of weird. Like after playing through the beehive level, like the queen is V's mom, but the queen is kind of like everybody's mom. So it's like everybody is V's sister. <laughs> so I got to find like the one sister that she actually cares about, I guess, in the story that is named and not just like the random guards that she dissed by leaving that she doesn't talk to. It's, it's weird. B, B relationships are weird. Yeah, it doesn't sound like something that's up my alley. <laughs> to yeah. be honest to be honest <laughs> to be honest yeah that'll that'll be our pun for the day no but i mean sounds like you're making some good progress on it so yeah good. i think i'm like eight hours in so that's like almost halfway i thought it was like a 20 something hour game yeah uh, okay yeah, yeah so if it's like 30 hours i'm like a third of the way there almost there you go i think it's like 25 hours for the story still question if you're gonna make it we'll find out keep questioning we'll that is we'll why we do the podcast to keep you guessing. really to keep to keep you honest <laughs> all right let's uh let's go ahead and die oh you know what do you have okay you got plots on here all right let's dive into our triple threat throwdown um Woo, so it's been a while since we've done one of these yeah definitely so as a reminder the way we do this is kind of like a mario kart podium so we're going to analyze these three games um and then at the end, we're going to rank them from first, second, to third in how we feel about it. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that the games are bad. It's just more so if Definitely putting these not three together. Case. Although yeah. opinions. Yeah, I guess opinions. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, first one here is Perfect Dark. It was developed by Rare, published by Rare, designed by Duncan Botwood and David Dorick. It was released in May of 2000. It is a first person shooter slash stealth and a Metacritic score of around 97 to 97 out of 100. Um, so, Ryan, tell us what Perfect Dark is about. So, Perfect Dark is set in an alternate 2023 against the backdrop of an interstellar war between two alien races. The Mayans, who resemble the archetypal gray alien, and the Skadar, reptile-like creatures who use cloaking device to appear human. You play as Joanna Dark of the Carrington Institute, a research center that secretly operates an espionage group in league with the Mayans. Uh, your mission to stop Datadyne and defense a defense contractor corporation allied with the Skadar. Uh, so this was a N64 game. It was very popular at the time. Uh, probably not as popular as, you know, GoldenEye, just because Golden's Eye, GoldenEye's multiplayer is still kind of like the thing of legends that people talk about today. Uh, but Perfect Dark had a lot going for it. It was um, really highly acclaimed at the time. It had a lot of things that you might have seen in in other franchises like the motion detector bombs from smash i believe that those are 
uh, <laughs> from this game. Um, I don't know a lot else about it. This was my like first time playing it, actually. So uh, we played this one, and then I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to level with you folks. We uh, we talked about this episode and played these games a long time ago. I had to go back through and adjust the prices because the prices have changed. It's been so long <laughs> since we played these games. And um, Still I remember uh, them, though. Yeah, I eventually went back, and I actually played this on the Rare Replay on xbox they had kind of like an upgraded version of this but like the main thing that stuck out to me when we and john were playing this on the sxc4 was that this is not a good game <laughs> this was like incredibly hard to get into uh the controls were not very intuitive you start off in this like very nondescript huge building with like a ton of floors and enemies to go through and like not really much to do unless you kind of find your way to where you need to go. Um, things that were impressive about the game. Uh, the glass like shattered, which was a cool effect. Um, there were, um, you know, it, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm struggling with this one, John. It was, it was very okay in my mind. I guess we should say that um, when this game came out, uh, it did receive a, well, I guess, I don't know if it, the meta score was a thing when this game came out. But as of now, it has a meta score of 97 out of 100. A near perfect title. And I just, I don't, I don't see it. Like, maybe in the day if I had played this back in the year 2000, I would have been like, oh. but as of now, so, I'm just kind of like, eh. So if the concept of like research center and espionage like kind of sparks to you like 007 that's because it's actually a spiritual successor of 007 so the original team uh was set to actually uh they were planning on working on a new 007 but they got outbid by ea which is why i think it's world is not enough i think was the one that followed it uh that's why that game was released by a non-rare company at that point or it's tomorrow never dies i think it was a game uh, so there's that going for it, but this is actually built on the same engine as the uh, 007 GoldenEye, funny enough. Uh, so it is meant to be a spiritual successor uh, to that title. And, you know, I I agree with you to an extent. I can see why this game would be so like well-revered uh, and get that 97 out of 100. It does very much feel like a 007 style game. The overall uh, premise of the story is fairly interesting for the most part, but like all in 64 games we did not opinion, make it far enough in this game for the story to become interesting true but the overall premise and like what you can expect i can see why it would get that high of a score or contribute to a high of a score for me all in 64 games are kind of in the same same basket like poor controls bad camera angles slow movements like it I've never really been a fan of N64 games, and this just didn't help that situation. Um, Single joystick, like aiming and shooting as opposed to like dual joystick, which became the norm for a reason because it's the mm -hmm. best. Now, this game uh, did require the expansion pack for a number of things. So it was a fairly big game uh, at the time. So had that going for it, too. But, um, you know, if we'll get into these other games and we'll kind of score them, but uh, this is definitely not one of my favorite shooters that I've ever played. And even though it is a spiritual successor to GoldenEye and it does use that engine, I still prefer GoldenEye at the end yeah. of the day. Yeah. So I want to share uh, one thing. It actually is not relevant, but it's sort of relevant. Uh, and it may have colored my opinion on this. So the only exposure I had to Perfect Dark prior to this that's Perfect Dark Zero for the Xbox 360. I reserved my Xbox 360 in like July. And like many sad children, <laughs> teenagers, during that Christmas, I received an extra controller, a headset, several games. But I did not get my Xbox 360 until the following February. So it was a sad Christmas for me <laughs> as I poured over the manual for Perfect Dark Zero for months, waiting for the ability to play this awesome game 
And then I never made it very far because it was not really something that tickled my fancy. And I really <laughs> would have much rather have Call of Duty 2. Yeah, I, I never messed with Perfect Dark Zero. And, and this was one of my first uh, times playing this game. So in terms of Perfect Dark, that was released in 2000. So yeah, overall, like I said, I, I lump N64 games into the same bucket. I'm not a huge fan. There's very few N64 games I can look at and say, yeah, that's perfection. I absolutely loved it. Haven't said that to this point. Yeah. In, in anything outside, like maybe Conquers, and even that's questionable. So pricing wise on this game, uh, we are looking at complete in box $50. And uh, I don't know why, but for some reason, I wrote in parentheses here, wow, seems reasonable. <laughs> and then uh, that peaked at fifty-seven fifty back in February of 2022. And that is currently holding. A uh, loose copy will run you sixteen thirty-one. dollars uh, That peaked at twenty-two thirty-five back in February of 2023. And that's trending down currently. So, you know, one thing I will say, Perfect Dark has going for it on the N64. It's got that box art, baby. It's a good yep, box art. Yeah. It looks nice. I mean, a minty copy of this for 50 bucks. You know what? Actually, you know what? wow, that does seem reasonable <laughs> to me. Honestly, like, John, you're more of a collector than I am. Like, 50 um, bucks for an N64 complete in box? Like, is uh, that outrageous? It's not my ch first choice for 50 bucks. If there was other games that were 50 bucks, I may go for them first over Perfect Dark. Uh, but it does have a pretty badass cover. So, um, you know, if this is your thing and you like collecting, yeah, 50 bucks, I guess, isn't terrible for a complete in box on 64 game nowadays. What about 1631 for a loose? I mean, um, is one of the highest rated shooters of all time. Like, I mean, if you're going to compare apples to apples and you're just going to be playing N64 shooters, I mean, it might be one of the best ones there. Yeah, I mean, if you're looking for like budget GoldenEye, yeah, I mean, this will meet your needs. It's got the multiplayer. It's got a campaign to it. It's a shooter. Yeah, I think 1631 sounds about right, and it's definitely worth it. Okay, so just right on both of these. Yeah, I would think so. All right, we're going with just okay. right. And we'll do our final review, obviously, of uh, the placing. Yeah, then we'll do the review. placing after we've reviewed all of them. So the next one we have here is a Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary. Uh, so I could have sworn we played the original Halo, but... So, I mean, I think we... We did, but I played the anniversary. So I actually put the pricing here based off of Halo Combat Evolved for the Xbox. So okay. we can kind of leave out the anniversary. I think I just, I think that's why it's in lower cases because that's the version I played. Okay, cool. Yeah, because I remember playing original. So this is uh, one of the ones we played separately. Yeah. So in, no, we played together, but it was, you played it later on, it sounds like. So, this particular version is 343 Industries and Saber Interactive, uh, but the original, of course, is Bungie. And it was published by Microsoft Studios. Project lead was Jason Jones on the uh, Combat Evolved Anniversary. It was released in November of 2011. Okay, that was the anniversary version. still. Are yeah. we sure we didn't just play the anniversary? Pretty sure. It's okay. Okay. All it's these okay. stats it's are Halo. like there. Everything here Halo. except for the pricing is, is for the, <laughs> it's Halo. the the combat evolved anniversary. People get it. It's Halo. I mean, at the end of the day, it's the same game. It's just updated to an extent. Uh, so first person shooter and reception on Halo is a 97 out of 100 as well. So my well, actually, you got to go into a plot. Go and go and tell us a plot. Everybody nobody knows so what Halo's about. you are master chief spartan john 117 in the war between the humans and the alien threat known as the covenant after an attack you find yourself on a manufactured planetary ring searching for the secret of the halo before the covenant can find it uh this is i mean come on man you've been living under a rock this is halo this is the game this is this is the only reason anybody cares about the Xbox, except for well, the next game we're going to talk about. Yeah. But like this was where it all began. Halo Combat Evolved. It started life on the Mac. Uh, it moved over after uh, Microsoft bought up Bungie. And they were like, hey, make us 
a console selling system and establish us firmly as third place in the console wars <laughs> moving forward for the rest of our lives and then stop trying eight years later just give it up so, so this was actually um also like a spiritual successor as well so they had uh, worked... actually you know what rare developed the original <laughs> <laughs> no so bungie had worked on i think it was marathon and marathon 2 yeah. and uh then they went into working on halo after the fact after they were acquired so um yeah i mean my first introduction to halo of course is like many uh you have a friend that happened to have made the wrong decision and purchased an xbox uh but then happened to stumble upon halo and so uh invited friends over to play some multiplayer we all thought well this game's kind of crappy uh but then jumped into the main campaign and enjoyed ourselves and from there it's history right so uh, i always i will well, let's start a few different things there so the multiplayer is awesome uh okay so here's the thing when you first jump into multiplayer with zero expectation on the game number one's multiplayer is not as fun as like number two oh, and three in dude, my opinion there's, there's nothing better than snipers but, on sidewinder but after you play the full campaign and then go back to multiplayer then it's a blast so yeah. initially we were just like what the hell is this it's like stupid and we jumped in the campaign with two of us and we enjoyed ourselves and we played for hours upon hours beat the campaign and said let's jump back in the multiplayer and then we started having land parties and everything else that goes with it and had a blast so um yeah that's my experience with it overall uh in terms of the gameplay i think it's one of the best first person shooters that's ever been made that one and up to three those are my three favorite halos and you know I think the variety of weapons throughout the game, uh, the story is very engaging. The enemies are hilarious and uh, also engaging. I think the the combat AI is pretty intuitive for its time and, and the way that it interacts with players. You also have the multiple types of difficulty from like, I think it's like rookie or private all the way up to, I think it's like I think legendary. It just goes to easy, normal, hard, and legendary. Yeah, it might be that too. So I'm thinking maybe something else or you know how they all are. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, like we always enjoyed. Okay, cool. Let's start it and on. Like, I think easy, they had the then... skulls in the first one, or maybe that was Halo Two where they introduced the skulls. I don't. I don't remember. To be honest, it's been a while. But um, as far as you know, after beating the campaign once, then you know you start feeling kind of frisky and say, "Let's play Legend or Legendary mode." And um, yeah, a lot of good times, man. Yeah, this is. This is such an amazing game. One thing I want to agree with John on is that nobody actually had an Xbox and Halo. They only had friends that had an Xbox and Halo. Oh, like, yeah. It's yeah. weird how nobody ever bought an Xbox and Halo, but everybody had a friend that had one. So if you're a friend, sound off in the comments. If you're not a friend, you're a moocher. Uh, also sound off in the comments. Let oh, us know well, who won. I, I was a friend to the person I had it, not a moocher. I wouldn't call it that. You know, we had a mutual agreement that they would uh, borrow my PlayStation. Mutual agreement? Mutual. Okay. Maybe <laughs> they had, there was an agreement that they would be able to play my awesome PlayStation 2 games if I got to play Halo on weekends. Yeah. I thought it was great. That's the only thing that it was ever good for, right? On the Xbox. Yeah. I mean, Halo was just like such an iconic time and it led kind of this like whole like, uh, Mountain Dew Doritos kind of like campaign for, you know, what gamers are like. I mean, camping out like at midnight, like all of that is like so Halo reminiscent to me. Um, I I can't thank Halo enough for, for what it's done. Uh, Master Chief in particular. Uh, but let's look at the brass tacks here. So Halo Combat Evolved for the original Xbox. Uh, that's running you 834 complete inbox that peaked at 1462 in September of 2024, very recently. And a loose copy will run you 710. That peaked at 999, also in September 24, very recently. And uh, that one's trending down. So, I mean, this game has kind of been heating peak uh, recently, kind of like with some new spike ups. Uh, I don't know why, because again, like I mentioned earlier in the screw up, uh, the anniversary edition is out there. It contains the original. It's really kind of cool. You can just like hit the select button and like toggle back and forth between new graphics and old graphics. It's very neat. Um, so there's lots of ways to get this game. 
Um, this might be one of the most price efficient ways. And if you're a collector looking to just like have something historical and cool and is a good game, or if you have an Xbox and you can actually like make use of the physical, you know, media, uh, you should already own Halo. So, you know, why are you even listening to me talk about the price? Cause you already have it. Cause if you have an Xbox, that's like pretty much the game you have. Yeah, I mean, this game has seen multiple releases at this point in its life cycle, so or lifespan, I guess you could say. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, at eight thirty four for a complete in box, it's a no brainer, right? Like that's, I would say, deflated for that one. Yep, definitely. Yeah. yeah. All right. Moving on to our last game today, we have. Oh wait, hold on. Did we say what the meta score was for Combat Evolved? It was ninety seven yeah. out of a hundred. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mentioned it. Okay. Good. All right. Well, anyways, now that I've heard John the second time and said it myself, <laughs> uh, Gears of War uh, for the Xbox 360. This was developed by Epic Games, uh, published by Microsoft Game Studios, designer Rod Ferguson. It was released in November 2006. Uh, this is actually a third person shooter, not a first person shooter. And it has a meta score of 94 out of 100. Uh, in Gears of War, you play as Marcus Phoenix, a member of Delta Squad, on a desperate last-ditch attempt to end the war against the genocidal subterranean enemy, the Locust, and save the remaining inhabitants of the planet Sarah. So I was looking into this game a little bit more, and I didn't realize it's been a while since I played it in full, and I, I really should replay it. But it's kind of a cool idea, right? Like, this planet is being used as a way for humans to kind of repopulate in a sense like humans were near like they were at the brink of extinction now the locusts are coming in to try and take them out again and such like i don't know i just i like this whole i'm very big in like post-apocalyptic stuff so it's kind of cool seeing a game that's really focused on like end of civilization end of humanity rising up against this foe like i like that type of stuff so i never really looked into it too deeply like the lore of the game um mainly because it's a badass game <laughs> to begin with. So really a lot of it's like trudging through a campaign and all the killing and stuff that you do. Uh, but they have like eight novels, a comic series. Like it's a big like multimedia franchise now. And I really didn't know that prior. Um, but my first experience of this, of, of course, is on the Xbox 360 uh, after Halo 3 and such. I think Halo 3 had already been out at that point. Uh, but we got, you know, we saw commercials for Gears of War and the Lancer and having a, a chainsaw bayonet. And we're like, okay, that looks badass. Let's play it. And that consumed our time. And that was when you had Xbox Live kind of really starting to kick it up at that point in time. So we had a lot of online playtime with Gears of War. And that to me was like the peak of online gaming for me was Gears of War. I, I love that game so much, just the way that it functioned. Um, you know, being able to hide behind walls, shoot above them and everything over barricades, um, you know, sneaking around like it, it was very strategic compared to Halo, where it's just kind of this all out combat on a field and like team deathmatch and such or in a land party like we'd have eight people, whatever it may be at the time. Gears of War to me is like a very strategic game and you had to kind of get in the head of your opponent that you're playing online to truly like get the most out of it right like to be a good player so we had a lot of good moments of this title so i i always enjoyed you know the grenade launchers in this game i felt that the the physics of the game were fantastic i enjoyed the exploding creatures and exploding characters chainsaws down the middle like it's just it was one of my first introductions like true gore in video games and i absolutely loved it um yeah, the gears of war was like one of those like m rated game and you were like yeah, yeah give me the blood the the one qualm i had with the game though is it does have like that sprint function in the title like you could be normal yeah, the pace. booty run yeah like yeah that and then you just like trudge like just pushes forward and you kind of see everything go like quick motion that was one thing i wasn't a huge fan of but for the most part everything else to me like i i like third person shooters and this was one of i wouldn't say my first but it was one of the first third person shooters that i truly enjoyed and got me into that style of uh of shooting game yeah i think gears of war is 
pretty iconic for a lot of people. I mean, you hit on most of the big high points there. Like nothing ever is going to be like seeing the Lancer for the first time, like a chainsaw bayonet machine gun. It was just like, why haven't we thought of this before? This is brilliant. This is what everybody wants. And you know what? So cool. And I know Jason with Corpse Sled Gaming, like he has a, a life-size Lancer from what I understand. He might have oh, a couple, um, but I've, I've seen those and they're they're pretty badass. Yeah, um, it did so much for kind of, I think, moving the, the frame of gaming forward a lot um, in a couple of ways. So it really was like such a next-gen game, like compared to like even Halo, which was just out the generation before where it's like cover shooting meant just kind of like drifting like in and out from like a box in front of you, whereas Gears of War was like slam in, you hard stick to the cover and shoot up over it. And you have like a vault animation to leap over it. It was very like you know, you can't be caught in the open. You're going to die. Like you, it's a cover based yeah. shooter as opposed to like a corridor shooter or something like that from kind of previous generations. Um, I'm going to reference him again. I reference him a lot. If you've ever heard me mention him and you haven't watched one of his videos, this is one I probably recommend maybe the most. Uh, Noah Coldwell Gervais did an amazing uh, video essay on the Gears of War series, a full retrospective. And he really goes into so much depth and has great writing and just words to say about this game. But the Mad World campaign for advertising Gears of War was such... Uh, he says it in his video, like he went to the theater like with his parents and you know they saw this like play before the movies i mean it was alongside like other ads and stuff but it was like his first experience seeing like a triple a video game advertised in you know a marketplace it was kind of more of an exclusive you know premiere type exposure and i mean that that video campaign is really incredible and it really did a lot i think back in the day to kind of capture people's imaginations with like giving this game like that was this gory M-rated shooter, but kind of giving it some depth. Like the Gears of War franchise is really good for, I think, trying to connect with you. It doesn't always like hit the mark right on the head, um, but it is a lot more than like my first impression, which was like, oh, this game has creatures like from the Chronicles of Riddick movie. Or what was that? Uh, Pitch Black. Yeah. Yeah. And um it's it's a great game it's got like very fun kind of like segmented gameplay where you're kind of going level by level it's like the prison level the vehicle escort level the like exploding enemies in the mines level like it kind of very uh incrementally progresses forward kind of like you know level based like an old game but the through line of the story and the characters and just kind of uh, it, it, the characters who who voice these characters they again referencing back to noah's video just they do such a good job like you believe these characters so well to kind of be who they are and it's just like they're all these just like <laughs> he says it the best way they're just like brick shit houses like all of these dudes you know <laughs> yeah, they're, they're just built like a wall of meat each of them and it just kind of it has such a style and and kind of like it looks exactly like what it is and it's just so fun and just like i think of all the games years of war is kind of the easiest to settle into and it is the latest release of all the titles we're talking about so it it kind of has that dna built into it over the years you can kind of see the evolution through these games but um being the lowest meta score out of these three games i i would say it's probably you know my favorite of them uh, funny enough, uh, lowest price too. So yeah, a complete in box copy is going to run you seven sixty six. That peaked in April of twenty twenty three at thirteen fifty nine, uh, and that is trending up. A loose copy is five ninety five. That peaked at thirty three ninety nine December of oh seven, uh, which was about a year after its release. That price is holding. So. You know, when I look at this, I would say it's also deflated. I think it's worth at least ten bucks uh, for a complete in box copy. Yeah, I, I would definitely agree. This is one of those games that is just really good, 
really solid. Um, definitely a recommend if you're going to have an Xbox 360. This isn't just a game to put on yourself. This is a game to pick up and play. Yep. So rating wise or, or placement of these, uh, I'll go first. Uh, my number three, of course, is going to be Perfect Dark. Yeah, I'm I think we're put... just kind of going reverse chronological order here. If I can guesstimate for both of us. Yeah, uh, Halo is going to be in my number two slot. Gears of War is going to be in my number one. Definitely. I mean, the lowest rated, uh, the lowest priced Gears of War kind of, for me, uh, definitely stands out as above and beyond. Like, I mean, even though Halo is such an iconic game, I mean, Gears of War and Halo are both kind of the games that built Xbox. And if you're going to play the first title of either of them, I really think Gears of War does a lot more than Halo yeah. does, even though it's so iconic. And I mean, it's it feels kind of crazy to say it. I'm sure some people light us up, but I mean, hey, keep, make your own podcast. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's our opinion, right? <laughs> that's all it really comes down to. It's just our opinions on these. Uh, you know, and I do love Halo. You know, I, I mean, if if I had if I were to say there's a tie allowed it would be a tie between halo and gears of war but for me gears of war slightly edges it out just because it is an edgier game anyways so um yeah i had a, i had a great time with that title yeah and i mean this this whole episode is basically like we said uh three shooters that are over 90 percent on metacritic i mean that's not what any of the paperwork i'm looking at says but that's the truth um <laughs> so uh I mean, you can't really go wrong with any of these. Like, we're not big yeah. fans of Perfect Dark, but there's lots of people who are, obviously. So that might trigger uh, with you a lot better than it does with us. Yep, definitely. All right. Well, um, that's going to conclude our triple threat throwdown this go-round. But a uh, reminder, we are going to be playing some Wario Land uh, 3 pretty soon, Uninvited, Psychosis, uh, Sim theme park and some tin hearts in upcoming episodes. So keep an eye out on those until then. This has been episode 318 of the game of players podcast. My name is John. I'm Ryan. And thanks for listening.